Today I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to do a maintenance tutorial on my Can-Am Spider RT SE6. It's time for an oil change. I had not done an oil change on the Spider before, although it's had two other oil changes before I purchased the Spider. So today will be my first time and I'm doing the tutorial to help out other folks who own the same type of Spider. Now, a word of caution. This is for the 2014 Can-Am Spider RT SE6, which is the 1330cc three-cylinder engine with the semi-automatic transmission. This is not the be-all, end-all for how to change your oil on a Spider. Strongly recommend you get a copy of the service manual for your Spider and use it as your primary reference. A couple of preliminaries before you get started, this is what I do. Always make sure I have the tools ready. If you're doing a job for the first time, you may not have the necessary tools. Or two of the tools that you will need is a uh, is a tool called a T45. This uh, a little Allen wrench similar thing, actually sometimes referred to as a star drive. It's a T45 size to open up the oil drain, and then a T35 to open up the transmission fluid change. Now, in case you're not familiar with that, the transmission fluid in the Can-Am Spider RT uh, is the same as the engine oil. It uses the same uh, fluid, so you drain both of them to flush out the entire system. I went ahead and ordered my replacement parts kit. Uh, ordered it straight from Can-Am, uh, which was uh, quite handy, about $85. It comes with the uh, oil that you'll need for the change, filter, and gaskets. I've also prepared my workspace. I've got my drain pan ready, and this is just my technique to keep things nice and neat. I have the drain pans inside a uh, hefty trash can bag. So when I'm finished, I just turn the bag inside out after I drain the oil into the storage container, and then I have a, uh, everything is nice and tidy. So first I'm getting ready to drain the oil. And before I actually start draining the oil, to make sure I don't have uh, a vapor lock situation, I unplug the oil filler port so it'll have airflow in there so I can get under there and actually drain the oil. Okay, the drain plug is right there with the light is shining on it. It's a little bit of an angle, and that's where the T45 wrench goes in. It goes up through the uh, bottom of the spider and although you can't quite see it there's a opening but the problem with the opening according to the online research says that there is a little bit of a lip there and there is so if you spill any oil it will collect in the lip and it could actually seep out for a while after you completed the oil change and since my spider stays parked in the garage I'm not really fond of that idea so I'm putting some paper towels around the uh, work area Sort of mop up anything before I spill it. There, that wasn't as bad as I thought. The recommendations are from other mechanics is to not remove the drain plug immediately. Let the oil drain out because it'll drain out a nice, slow, even uh, flow into your drain pan, and that way it'll minimize the actual mess. Once we do that, we're going to let that drain, then we're going to move around to the other side and open up the, uh, the transmission drain. If you're doing your oil change indoors, or maybe even for your outdoors, you might need some extra lighting. I always use a small light, like a small mini mag, so I can get into small places to take a look. I also use a little shop light, which also doubles as one of my uh, lights to illuminate the garage when I do my videos. Uh, Walmart, $7.00. I also use uh, gloves. These are a little thicker than your standard latex gloves. They're the nitrated gloves, I believe. Walmart, $5 for a big old box of them. Uh, always keep them on hand. Everything from uh, working on my vehicles to uh, cutting up jalapenos. Actually, we're getting ready to open up the, uh, the transmission drain. Now, the transmission drain requires a 6-millimeter uh, Allen wrench. 
and trying to find it was a little tricky and I had to use I had to use my antique survival mirror because I needed a small mirror because I knew it was up here somewhere give you some orientation this is the front brake and footboard for the driver this is the exhaust pipe with my index finger tapping it if you use them a little mirror and you run up a little bit you'll see right there where my thumb is at the actual drain plug for the six millimeter so it's uh, out of sight you cannot see it unless you're actually physically under the spider or using a meter a mirror like I am uh, you need a separate drain pan for this one and you open that one up and let the oil from the transmission drain into the second pan the next step in order to get access to the oil filter you need to remove this body panel right along in here now watching the videos I'm a little intimidated but we're going to try to do it without breaking anything pulling back from the rear okay I got the first body panel off and I don't know if you could see this but if I turn it around the uh, there, there are four push pins one two three or push parts there is a clip and this is plastic so you don't want to break that and that actually fits right up in here on top, top of this plastic right here so when you're removing it you don't want to pull straight out you want to pull the other push pins out and slide the top left corner back and it just comes right out first time I've ever done that and uh, I didn't break anything next you need to remove the right side mirror now this is always a little intimidating because the internet shows that these things uh, have a high failure rate because of the plastic components and there's a technique for it that let's let's pray that it works a little pressure on the top because you got three put you got two push pins one at the, two at each bottom right and left are forward and rear and a hanger up here with the hangers plastic you don't want to break that just like we saw in the uh, little side panel we just removed so the technique is to put pressure on this so that the pin does not want to break slap slap backwards then slap up with pressure here wow that was actually quite simple you get uh, your lighting trim lights the power supply right here so you don't want that to fall back inside so you just want to be careful and disconnect and remove the mirror next you use a small screwdriver and pop up this one push pin you have to lift the cargo door front cargo door open first and you have to work with a little bit but it comes right out and set that aside make sure you don't lose the push pin and while you're uh, at it you can actually check your coolant level uh, right in there uh, we got to remove the next step is to remove the uh, wind fairing this takes a t30 torque next you need to remove four fasteners that hold on the entire side body panel here there are three under the side view mirror and one under the cargo area and yes I did take a little uh, set of surgical I think they're called forceps that I keep in my utility box to make sure that that does not fall back up in there which is for the power supply for the side view mirror and when you're reassembling this you make note that there is a, a washer behind each one don't let you, don't lose your washers a little trick I learned in my airplane maintenance days I like to keep my hardware segregated and in a little Ziploc bag. That way they're not liable to roll away and you always know where they're at and you have all the components. All right, and there's one hidden one that I didn't see until I started playing with it. Up under the seat by the oil filler cap is another one. The nice thing about the uh, Spider is that oil changes really do once a year or every 9,000 miles whichever comes first uh, with the mileage I expect to put on it I expect that uh, once a year old change will be fine it's a good pre-season prep and I added that screw to the uh, little ziplock bag with the other ones word of caution these two fasteners right here are push pins they do not come out from the outside you simply pull them out but you do that with the entire body panel you do not loosen these up
and this slides out. And the, like I said, these fasteners do not come out because they connect to push pins on the other side. Next, we need to remove this internal fairing, which, which actually hides the oil filter, I hope, which is right behind here. There are two pieces of hardware we have to remove, two fasteners. There is one here and one here. These are, although the same size tool can be used to extract them, they are not the same size as the others. They are longer because they actually go into the frame. So you want to keep these separate from the ones that actually hold the, uh, the, uh, the gray plastic or whatever color your spider is to the outside. Just a little bit longer than the, uh, than the others. And since we're dealing with plastic, there's not a lot of torque behind these. But there is a little bit of resistance because they don't want them to fall out. And in theory, this should lift right out. And there it is. Okay, the next step is to remove the oil filter cover, which is recessed into the spider right in here. That takes a 36 millimeter socket. <clears throat> Whoever put this on last time, over tightened it. And they caution you about over tightening these things. I wish I had a half inch adapter for my socket so I could just spin it off, but I don't. Not too bad, just one little drop of oil on the floor. Then just lift the oil filter out. I pulled the uh, transmission drain plug out. There is a magnet built into the top of it to collect any magnetic particles that get peeled off so it doesn't end up in the transmission or the engine. And you can see a small amount of material very very fine you can expect to see some of that that's no more what you're looking what you're looking for and hope you don't find is anything big but a uh, few little tiny particles that's just normal wear and tear from the engine when you buy the oil change kit it comes complete with uh, the new filter and all the washers and gaskets that you'll need now the main oil drain plug has two gaskets and one washer the gaskets are color-coded, green and black, so it eliminates the possibility of screwing it up. All you got to do is remove these and put the replacement parts in. This is the oil filter cap insert, and you have three gaskets. Two here and a big one here, and they are also in the kit. Now this is plastic, so it probably needs a little bit of TLC so you don't... Uh, tear or mar the plastic so you can have a, uh, a nice seal. Next step, reverse the process. Simply insert the filter. Make sure the gasket, the bottom end of the gasket is seated inside. Replace the cap. Thread it in place. And then use your large socket to torque it down. Then add the oil. Now after I've added the first full gallon and part of the first full quart, made sure that I had none of my plastic bags in contact with the bottom of the spider so nothing would melt to the bottom of the spider. And then I'm going to go ahead and start it up and pressurize the system and I'll check for leaks. That should be sufficient to get the oil flowing through the filter and uh, it won't warm the oil up, but you should be able to check for leaks based on just that. And that's it. I put the uh, oil filler cap back on and now I'm getting ready to reverse the process to reassemble the spider. And before I do that, I had thought how it would be nice to run some power supply cables from the battery, which is up in the front of the front storage area, to the area around the seat and this would be a great time but I don't have any wiring to actually run the wire and that way I'd have power supply which came off the battery I could use to uh, charge cell phones and that sort of thing but that's a project for another day
During the cleanup process, one of the things I like to do is take the old filter and just kind of take a look at it and make sure you don't see anything abnormal. What I'm looking for is uh, metal fragments, scrapes, little tiny uh, curly cues of metal, and I don't see anything, which is uh, that's a good thing in the uh, old filter before I dispose of it. And then I just continue with the cleanup process. Well, the first oil change is in the books. Now, the only time-consuming part that I really found was disassembling and reassembling the side panels on the Spider. Well, it took me about three hours, but it was my first time. I suspect the next time is going to go a lot faster. And I was shooting a video this time, so trying to reposition the camera and the lighting took a little bit of that time. So thanks for watching, and you all take care. Thank you.